In Section 5, Describe Identity, Governance, Privacy, and Compliance Features will Describe Core Azure Identity Services Describe Azure Governance Features Describe Privacy and Compliance Features Across all platforms, it's important to distinguish between authentication and authorization. Authentication identifies the person or service seeking access to a resource. Authentication requests legitimate access credentials. Authentication is the basis for creating secure identity and access control principles. Authorization determines an authenticated person's or service's level of access. Authorization also defines which data they can access and what they can do with it. In short, authentication is who are you and authorization is what can you do. Multi-factor authentication provides additional security for your identity by requiring two or more elements to be verified. There are three categories that can be used with Azure multi-factor authentication to verify your identity. Something you know. This could be a password or the answer to a security question. Something you possess. This might be a mobile app that receives a notification or a token generating device. Something you are. This is typically some sort of biometric property, such as a fingerprint or face scan used on many mobile devices. Azure multi-factor authentication can be enabled within Azure Active Directory to require your Azure users to authenticate using multiple elements. Speaking of Azure Active Directory, it is Microsoft's cloud-based identity and access management service. It's a robust service that provides authentication, single sign-on, application management, B2B, B2C, and device management capabilities. When your organization signs up for an Azure subscription, a dedicated and trusted instance of Azure AD is automatically created. These subscriptions can include Microsoft Azure, Microsoft Intune, or Office 365. A single organization is known as an Azure tenant. Each Azure tenant has a dedicated and trusted Azure AD directory. The Azure AD directory includes the tenant's users, groups, and apps, and is used to perform identity and access management functions for tenant resources. The modern security perimeter now extends beyond an organization's network to include user and device identity. Organizations can utilize these identity signals as part of their access control decisions. Conditional access is the tool used by Azure Active Directory to bring signals together, to make decisions, and to enforce organizational policies. Conditional access is at the heart of the new identity-driven control plane. Conditional access policies are simply if-then statements. If a user wants to access a resource, they then must complete an action. For example, if a payroll manager wants to access the payroll application, they're required to perform multi-factor authentication to access it. Azure administrators are faced with two primary goals, empower users to be productive wherever and whenever, and protect the organization's assets. By using conditional access policies, you can apply the right access controls when needed to keep your organization secure and stay out of your user's way when not needed. Throughout Microsoft's history, our access control strategy has utilized many different mechanisms to authorize users to perform different tasks. When we created Azure, we implemented RBAC, or Role-Based Access Control, because it provides the most fine-grained access management capabilities. RBAC also allows you to grant only the amount of access users need to do their job. RBAC works by creating a role and granting that role specific permissions. Users are then placed into that role and provided those permissions. RBAC is also used to access the Azure portal and control access to resources. When discussing governance in Azure, it's critical to understand resource locks. Resource locks protect Azure's resources from accidental deletion or modification. When users run scripts in Azure environments, there's a potential for accidents to occur. At some customers, I've noticed scripts that delete virtual machines that they no longer believe to be in use. Resource locks can ensure that Azure resources, such as VMs, are not deleted. They can also be used to set Azure resources to read only, meaning that the resource can only be read from, but may not be deleted and may not have its properties altered. Tags are another critical technology that can be used to ensure resources in Azure are effectively governed over their lifecycle. Tags provide you the ability to add metadata for various Azure resources, such as name, value pairs. You can logically organize resources in a taxonomy that you create. Tags are especially useful for billing information or for labeling resources based upon their owner, department, environment, or even cost centers. Underpinning all Azure services is the Azure Resource Manager. Before Azure Resource Manager deploys any services to Azure, it examines whether or not they abide by Azure policies. 
Azure policy files are simply JSON-based files that allow you to evaluate and enforce compliance policies. You can stay compliant with corporate standards and service level agreements, or SLAs, by using policy definitions to enforce rules and affects Azure resources. Azure Policy evaluates and identifies Azure resources that do not comply with your policies. Azure Policy also provides built-in policy and initiative definitions under categories such as storage, networking, compute, security center, and monitoring. We've talked consistently about Azure ARM templates and how they provide you the ability to deploy Azure resources in a standardized, repeatable manner. Azure Blueprints take the concept of templates to the next level. They're a template of templates. Blueprints make it possible to rapidly stand up new environments and to enforce role assignments, policy assignments, and resource groups. With over a decade of experience in the cloud, at Microsoft, we've learned a lot. When customers begin their cloud journey, a number of different best practices have arisen. The Cloud Adoption Framework is a collection of documentation, implementation guidance, best practices, and tools that are proven guidance from Microsoft designed to accelerate your cloud adoption journey. The Cloud Adoption Framework, or CAF, provides not only documentation, but tools, guidance, and narratives in order to ensure your cloud adoption journey takes the best path possible. It's important to understand the basic principles by which Microsoft operates Azure. From a security perspective, Azure is secure by design. Throughout the entire fabric, intelligent security is built in to protect against cyber threats and has extensive automation and AI. From a privacy perspective, Microsoft is committed to ensuring the privacy of organizations through contracts and providing user control and end-to-end -end transparency. From a compliance perspective, Microsoft respects all local laws and regulations and provides comprehensive coverage of compliance offerings to aid administrators. We oftentimes receive questions from customers on Microsoft's exact stance on privacy, what data is collected from products and services, which data is processed and how, and what that data is used for. All of that information may be found in the Microsoft Privacy Statement, which may be found at microsoft.com forward slash privacy statement. Besides the Privacy Statement, two other important documents are the Online Services Terms and Data Protection Addendum. The online services terms define the terms and conditions for products and online services that you purchase through any Microsoft volume licensing program. The data protection addendum sets the obligations with regards to processing and security of customer and personal data in connection with online services. Both of these may be found on the Microsoft website. For many customers, before a single line of code is written or a subscription is created, the questions must be answered for the Chief Information Security Officer surrounding security, privacy, compliance, policies, features, and practices about Microsoft's cloud offerings. The Microsoft Trust Center provides these answers with in-depth expert information that's tailored to specific roles in your organization. The resources are curated, including highly recommended ones, and arranged by topics. The Trust Center can help you in reducing the administrative overhead to rapidly begin using Azure. Compliance is important. If you're going to trust a cloud service provider to host your critical business and mission systems, you want to ensure that it meets or exceeds all applicable regulations. Microsoft hosts a comprehensive set of compliance offerings to support you in complying with regulations. The compliance documentation includes global, governmental, industry-based, and even regional documents, and how Azure's products and services meet these specific compliance standards. When we refer to Azure, we are typically referring to Azure Commercial. However, Microsoft operates a number of sovereign cloud regions as well that are not commercially focused. One such region is Azure Government. Azure government meets the security and compliance regulations of U.S. federal agencies, state and local governments, as well as their supporting solution providers. Azure Gov is a separate instance of Azure, physically isolated from commercial deployments, and only accessible to screened authorized personnel. Some compliance standards that are met by these U.S. sovereign cloud environments include FedRAMP, FISMA, NIST 800, ITAR, IRS, DOD Impact Levels 2 through 6, and CGES. Outside of the United States, there are additional sovereign cloud offerings Microsoft operates to meet the geographic and governmental regulations put in place by various countries, such as Germany or China. Azure China is one such foreign sovereign cloud that's operated in conjunction with 21 Vianet and its physically separated instance of Azure. All data on Azure China stays within China to ensure compliance. That's the end of Section 5 describing identity, governance, privacy, and compliance features. Some key takeaways. Azure offers a number of identity services natively. 
Authentication is assessing who you are, while authorization is assessing what you can do. Azure AD, multi-factor authentication, single sign-on, and conditional access are all powerful technologies Azure uses to provide appropriate levels of access to Azure. Role-based access control, resource locks, and tags are all effective tools for governing Azure. Azure Policy is a great way to enforce governance. Policy files may be aligned with Azure Blueprints to ensure compliance for existing or new deployments. The Cloud Adoption Framework provides best practices, tools, and guidance on an organization's cloud adoption journey. The privacy and compliance terms are all spelled out in online resources such as the Privacy Statement, Online Services Terms, Trust Center, and Compliance Documentation. Lastly, Microsoft also operates several sovereign cloud regions to meet the compliance and regulations of specific countries. Next up is Section 6, describing Azure cost management and service level agreements.